Thank you all again so much for joining us. My name is Jasmine Knight and I'm one of the optimizers here at Vine Skills, helping to bring you all free help every Wednesday. Um, we have our wonderful optimizer, Derek, here as well. So I'll let him introduce himself and then take it away. Awesome. All right. So I'm Derek. I'm a Georgia attorney uh, that's gone through from doing, I started on doing finance and then did compliance for the law firm. And now I'm over here doing Vine skills, which is wonderful because I love working on law firms rather than in law firms. Uh, so it's a perfect match for me. I uh, have a handful of years of experience and still keep my active bar license, although most of my stuff is now fusions and doc gens and all of the wonderful things within FileVine. So I'm happy to be a resource for you, happy to go through and be able to answer any questions. So definitely use that Q&A as we go through. I can see it today. Last week, I couldn't see it. Uh, so if they come in, I can actually read the real time. Fingers crossed that it stays that way. But okay, so we're going to look at doc gens today. <clears throat> we'll cover the very, very basics of the doc gen going through, and I'm going to cover details of creating one. Um, we'll skip over some of the widget stuff and things in there. You do have to have a doc generation widget. Um, and then let's see here. Oh, editing and saving and things like that. We'll work on those too as well. So I have a couple pages open already. Uh, I have a doc gen widget here. It's called testing logic. When I look in my background, I can see that this is a doc generation multi-template. You can do a single template. I generally do multi multiple templates because in that way, if you want to version things as well, it's easier to do that. You can go through and rename a document and then generate a new one. But this one, I... It's already built in there. Uh, you just create a widget for it, and then however you want it in your section. Now, generally, when we're looking at docgen widgets, there are, well, actually, let me open my docgen first. You can see we're in testing logic. So advanced tools, docgen setup. I picked my org project type in the section because I wanted to do case summary. Uh, and this is my widget name. So when I open up my field list, you can, Wait for it. I probably should have done this beforehand. So sorry. Oh, cool. It's going fast. All right. So you can see that we have all of these different sections. Now, there are a lot of sections here in this template uh, that are not going to be shown. But we have all of the doc gen fields for all those different sections here. Now, the difference is, or the reason why they have it like this is because we have our static section and our collection section. So if you want to be able to go through and get specific information about, let's say, a medical provider, or let's do insurance, insurance company. You're going to want to have that doc gen living here in that insurance section. That's how you're able to go through and get information like uh, what's your type, your company contact card, adjust your contact card. I'm not able to do those same types of things from the from a static or one that doesn't have the add item button at the top left. I'm not able to go through and pull all that other information. It's just kind of how FileVine has set up to make their doc gens. It's generally from the section you are working in, and then there's going to be additional information that you can add in, uh, such as contact informa client contact information or project contact information, uh, as well as anything from the static fields. So I have this lovely yet terrible uh, letter that... <laughs> AI helped me create so that we have something that we can go through and we can work on. And I think this is going to be a perfect example to be able to go through and just kind of plug some of this information in here and go through and quickly generate it. So once I have my widget made, I want to go through and I want to create a template. I can do this a couple of ways. I can go through and fix all of the information here that I want and then upload it. Or I can add the template And then from here, I can open it and edit it. So let me close this out. Let's save. Oops, that means the, the header is probably not there if I didn't save it. OK, so I could double click on it, and it's going to show it right there in the previewer for me. Ah, oh, yeah, my header is gone. That's OK. From here, I can hit Edit. And I want to open up Microsoft Word. So then now I have my Word document, and it's live within FileVine. So any saves I make 
right away are going to go through and be live in Filefind. So this is if someone's going through and using it, but we're making updates, uh, they can continue to use it while I make updates as long as I just keep saving to it too. I can tell as well, based on just the name itself, uh, I have personal injury law firm letter requesting HIPAA, which is what the actual doc gen title was. And then we have all of these little numbers and everything behind it. And that just means that it is live within Filevine 2. So you can save it and you'll be good to go. Okay. So then I can come in here into my different sections to be able to go through and get my information that I want out. Um, as we go through, I can pick on client. We'll start there. And this is going to show you the very first page of client information. So Yeti, my dog, one of my dogs, is my client today. Um, and I have some very, very basic information in here for her. We can add other information as well. But this page that I clicked on is going to look at all of this information. Then we have details, children, additional client info, associated projects. Of course, they're all going to have associated projects. But you can see here, too, we have details, children, additional client info. And then it looks like Susie has a test in here as well. So if you want to get information from other client cards, you'll click on one of these. But for our purposes today, we can just come over here and click client name. And I'm just going to click the, uh, the copy symbol right there, or clipboard. And I can go through and I can just paste over it. Voila. So now if I were to go through and try to generate this document, it would everything would be the same besides client name. That would go through and that would pull in the actual uh, client. Okay, so we can continue working through this. I want my client address. I'm just going to hit control fine or command F. And I'm going to just find the client address and I want just the block. You can do it uh, depending on you know, your needs. You could do line one, line two, city, state, and zip all separately. Uh, but we're just going to go through and do the block for now because it would it would work for the purpose of this letter. Uh, we don't have to get into any crazy conditionalities, which are possible within Microsoft Word uh, and Filevine. It's just that would probably be more under a fusion topic um, to be able to go through and do that. So we'll continue on this way. I can delete those. Uh, I'm going to, well, for my long fur name, I actually don't know what it says in there. So we'll go through and we'll test it out. I'm going to open up another one and it's just going to be org info. If you're like, I have no idea what section this would be pulling from, you can pull a list of all of the fields. That does just take a little bit longer to generate. It's at the top left-hand corner. Um, that will pull all of the fields that are listed in your file vine. But again, it does take a little bit longer. Once you really get into coding out doctrines, there are going to be some codes that you're probably just going to know off the top of your head because they're the same across the board like client name or date or things like that. Um, but again, as you're maybe just starting out, I usually pull a list of all um, and just use command F from there so that you don't have to try to remember what section you're pulling from or where this might live um, if you don't know. That's very fair, Jasmine, because we're sitting here in the sandbox and it is loading, but it is very, very slow. But also I'm not surprised since we have a bunch of different templates in here. I think we have like 45 now of test templates, real templates, all the different things. So, and that really slows down things as well. So, but Jasmine's right. I mean, generally, oh, see, there it is. We just have too many fields in our Filevine org for us to be able to do all, but most of y'all should be fine. You should be able to just go through and do the list of all fields. If you do see yourself running into a problem where you're like, we have way too many fields, we may be overbuilt when we first started and have pared down since, reach out to us. We can help get those cleaned up so that your software starts to run a little bit smoother and faster. Absolutely. Okay. So I do want to go through and add the date here. Now you can use Microsoft dates, the dates in Word that are pre-built in. Uh, you could go through and do those, but I don't personally believe we need to for this one. And I generally don't. Normally, I take today underscore long. If, however, I am looking for doing 
let's say it's a Spanish letter and I need to have the Spanish date in there, then what I'm going to do is use the actual merge fields that Word has built in. Uh, and then I'm going to go through and I would change, I would highlight what whatever the field was. And then I know I am on a, I am on a MacBook, but I can easily change the language here to whatever I need to. And that's going to help your formatting as well. But generally for most purposes, today long we'll go through and it will work for you. Uh, since I had my header, but it deleted, I'm going to go through and remove those. If I wanted to pull my information from the organization, then I would go to, let's see, this one right here. It's the org. Uh, you would just search for org, and I could get all of that information here. That we'll show you two. Sorry, go oh, ahead, sorry. There. I was going to say, this is a good example, too, of some filters and some helpers that you can use for your doc gens. Uh, let's say you want to go through and get the last four digits of a social security number, then you would use field name, right? And this is, I guess for my computer, it is shift and then backslash is what turns this into that line right there. And then I can say right number of characters. Uh, this one says eight, so it gets the last the last eight digits, but if I said four, then I would just get what I needed for the social security number. Um, the org info is pulled from your setup, um, or I guess they probably moved it now to manage account. I haven't seen them set up, but um, you are able to kind of set up that. Oh, yeah, it is in there. That's where it's going to pull from your contact info um, page. Yep. So I could have all of this in there and it would just go through and pull in. Um, that's your org org information. Okay. And then we can go continue to go through and do some other things with it. Um, I'll show you two as well of how we can do potential genders uh, or yeah, genders in there. Uh, a lot of people don't want to end up doing them and that's totally fine, but that is something that we can go through and we can help with too as well. Uh, so I could sit here and I could add my client name. So it's going to say dear. And the client name is going to be, what did I, I don't even know what I named Yeti in here besides Yeti. Yeti, the dog, very crafty and creative on my part, if I may say. Uh, so Yeti, the dog. I could go through and I could look at her details here and find, did we remove our gender by chance. Oh, there it is. I can pick pronouns based on gender as well. Assuming that this is assigned correctly in the contact card. If the information is not there, it's not going to do any good. Uh, but we can make a default to they if that works too as well. Or something that is not masculine or feminine. Um, a universally accepted word. So I can say dear, and then I'm going to go through and I have my insert new field. I believe it's option F11 or could alt F11, I think, maybe to add a new one. Jasmine, did you know offhand? No, I'm not sure. And I know for, yeah, we have a, a tool that allows us to easily kind of add those items in um, to add in new merge fields. I can see if I can Google it. Thank you, Jasmine. I appreciate that. I can also, I could go through it and insert mailings. I can do as well. If I wanted to set my properties, my preferences, preferences up, my properties right there, I want. Looks like it's uh, control F9. Perfect. Awesome. So you use that to be able to go through and, and set one of these fields in. And let's see here. Oops. My clients are Joe and Judy Smith. We have a question. So my clients are Joe and Judy Smith. So in the client card, we have to put them as a business so that both names are shown on the account. So how does that work when you're saying dear Joe and Judy and not Joe and Judy Smith? So I suppose it depends on how it's listed on your contact card, I will say. Um, I'm not for sure where you put their names are in, names in. If you do put the names 
in the same line. Uh, I imagine that something could be done with that, but I haven't, I haven't gone through and had to do something like that yet, but I normally uh, suggest that we do that we figure other ways so that each individual has their own contact card um, since they're their own person as well. So uh, you can definitely reach out to us too with a little bit more details because I imagine that is something we could figure out, but I'm not for sure off the top of my head. It all depends on how your contact card is set up. If you have them in their name contact card field, then that's going to be a little bit tricky. But if you have them in an additional field on like, let's say the details, we might be able to go through and do something like that. It's a good question. A little complex though. Okay. Reach out to us. You can reach out to me afterwards. Um, if you want to send me a, a video or a screenshot, and I'll be happy to go through and help you out. Or give you some a starting basis of how, where you could potentially go to start trying to figure that out. Okay. So here I'm going to go through, uh, of course. I'm going to go through and I'm going to create a, essentially what it's called is, uh, well, I'm going to insert the prefix based on gender. So I can do if, and then I'm going to add another field. And let me add a quote right there as well. Merge field. Um, let me pull up my doctrine fields for that's the client and I want by details. And I imagine it's client.custom.gender, but we'll double check. Not perfect, right there. Cool. So I don't want to keep those brackets in there. Um, these brackets right here, the brackets that you would just copy and paste over. You just put merge field and you put that. Cool. And I have that in quotes. So that's an if then scenario. Uh, so our first test is if the client's gender equals, and then let's look at our options for what's in here. We have male, female, and unknown. So let's do, we'll start off with male. If our client is male, then I want Mr. Otherwise, and then I could do if client equals, or I could do female, or female version, which would be Mrs. or Miss. However, that's not going to tell us if it's not answered. So we're actually going to build a second one, a second test in here in our false. So still put your quotes there and I can insert my new field and I can start typing if. This is a little complex. Uh, if you need help with this, for sure, just reach out. So do merge field and I'm going to test the same thing again, client.custom.gender. And so now we have a second test. If this equals Oh, let's see here. We have female. If equals females. Female, let's just do miss. Otherwise, I'm going to make it blank and make sure there's no space there. So this is some just of coding that can go through and happen in your in your doc gens. If you don't get it the first time, totally okay. I will say that. I've been doing this for years and there are still times where I don't get it right. So I'm just hoping I'm not embarrassed right now about this not being right. Just being totally honest here. Um, oh, there we go. I need to figure out my last quote there because I need to have quotes to close it off. That's how it's separated together. Okay. So now I can right click this. I can update my field and I should toggle my field. Oh, I don't want to toggle just the one. Let me highlight all of it. Cool. So this should come out blank because uh, client name does not equal male or female, or not client name, client.custom.gender does not equal male or female. Once we generate it, though, we should get an answer. Uh, let me just save Yeti's card so that we don't miss it. Okay. So this letter is, we need to get an updated yeah, HIPAA authorization form. Uh, please call our office at our phone number. And you could do a specific user from the case if you wanted to choose, let's say someone who's listed on maybe the case summary. Uh, let's see here. We don't have our 
or it's not here on the case summary. We can look at our team too, because I believe we can pull team emails as well. And this is an older case that may not have all of the, or older template that may not have all the things I want. Okay, well, we can use these. So if I wanted the handling paralegals number, then I would find the code that says the handling paralegal. Uh, for here, I want the organization phone number because I want I want the client to call the organization. Uh, the front desk can go through and be able to assist the client and it will save uh, me from a call or my paralegal from a call. Especially if it's just getting something set up to come in and, and sign it. Uh, so I can call or I can go through and just paste my org phone number in. And then we want the attorney name. So if you have your all fields on one page, like Jasmine said, you're good to go. If you're like me and you're struggling just a little bit to get that to load, then I'm going to go to the section that has those contact cards to pull in that information, whichever one that may be. Here it is case summary for us. Uh, hopefully it goes through and it loads. And you'll okay. notice as you're pulling data from contact cards, that address, phone number, email have multiple options. Um, they have up to eight for the contact cards for your org, it's a little bit less. So just be cognizant as you're pulling those addresses and phone numbers that if you're pulling the first address like we did, that it that know that it's going to be pulling this first address card. Same thing with email and phone right number. Yep. Um, so if you're trying to pull like a fax number in, that's probably not going to be the first number that you have in a contact card. It's probably going to be the second or third. Um, so you just want to make sure that you and your team um, go in with the knowledge that phone two is always the fax. Phone one is always the way that you're going to contact the person. Um, that way your doctrines pull in properly. Yep. Now you can change these labels here to have facts, but if I were to go through and pull this information in, uh, it's gonna pull in the word facts as well. So you would wanna use something like they show on the bottom of their, any of their uh, field pages to be able to go through and remove that, the word facts, if you do not want it in there. And you'd be looking at likely these right here. One of those, okay. So let me get to, oh, wait, I'm still on this page. Perfect. I want, I'm going to hit, I'm going to find, and I'm going to search, just search for attorney first. Okay, handling attorney. So handling attorney, full name. And if you can do extended, which is going to include any prefixes, suffixes, uh, or, yeah, prefixes or suffixes, it's what it's going to go through and it would uh, include. Um, Full name will include first, middle, and last. And so I just want that here. Now, if I had, if if, if it wasn't, or if in my firm we have more than one lawyer or attorney or paralegal with the same name, then, uh, but they have maybe, you know, it's a first and then it's a second or senior and junior, however, then you probably want to go through and use something like that. But here I can just do attorney's name. And then I can do, let's see here. Let me do title. Now, what is the oh, job title? Yep. Perfect. And as you can see, it has to be like the match to your file line. So Derek has a file line project open that he's been referencing every now and then. Um, so as you go through and do doc gens, um, especially early on, you may want to have a project open. That way you can view what the actual field name is. It'll eliminate a little bit of time um, from you all having to just mindlessly search through. Um, I know for incident type, some type, some folks have type of incident. It has to be exact. So um, just make sure you're aware there. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, excellent point there. Uh, before we go through and generate this too, since we did touch on it, so this is address one. And then address two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how the addresses are counted. Phones are phones and emails are going to follow this format. So it's one, two, and three. Cool. Let me save this so that 
Why are, oh. Probably don't need all the addresses. Let's see if that's why it's mad at me. Probably don't need all the phones either. More time. It's mad at me today. Well, it is okay. We don't necessarily need that. Uh, let's come through and I'm going to put, do I have a contact card in here? Um, give myself a title too. Perfect. Okay. So I want to go through and I'm going to test this first. So I'm going to see what's right, what's wrong, and then I can continue working. I would say test test often when you're going through and doing these, especially if you're going to continue to add a lot of fields. It's not fun if you add 40 fields and then you try to test it and it's broken. It doesn't work because it's not going to necessarily give you all of the tips to find out exactly why it is broken. So I always advise just test early, test often. Cool. So let me come here to or I'm at case summary. Let me refresh my page to make sure that it's we have something in there. Perfect. And oh, should have saved. Wonderful. So now I can go try and give this a try, see what happens. Hopefully it does not come out blank. Okay. So we can see a couple things here. First off, we have, it looks like I have some issues with my settings, my line spacing options. I'm gonna add a don't, single, perfect. Okay, so this right here, would be my client name. And then right here is the client address block. So really, I could probably just get away with just the client address block here, which is nice. We go through and we can see, see our, our, uh, our formula or a code or test. So if female equals male, then you missed her. That's not true. So it's going to automatically go over and do this part right here is if female equals female, do miss. So if I right click on this and I toggle my field codes, it appropriately pulls in. But I do need to fix that right there. Wonderful. OK, we have our phone number that's pulling in correctly. And then we have my name and the title that I just went through and added there. So there are a few things to edit. If I were to continue to make this as a real, real letter, I would make sure that my letter heads in there. And then we have all of the reference information right here, you know, incident date, anything like your phone number, anything like that. But yeah, that is the very basics of going through and getting a doc gen created. And I know I mentioned it. Uh, but let's see here. So if I wanted to do the same thing in, let's say, insurance, it's going to pull from whatever card that I am in. And then I also am not able to, I'm not able to go through and pull in an insurer's name from here. If it's only saved in my insurance section, I would have to do some sort of fusion report where I run a report to make sure I get the correct title of it and then go through and create it. So fusion, fusion reports are a little bit more difficult, but they're going to follow a lot of this here. So we'll stick on just this. But if you're looking for complex doc gens where you want to be able to pull things from multiple sections and multiple collection sections, specific details, that is, you should go through and probably check out one of the older Fusion free helps uh, for Word documents. Otherwise, we'll end up doing another one at some point too. And of course, we can help you with it as well. Just wanted to let you know that. So this is the first one. I have a lot more I could do to it, but for the sake of time, uh, we're not going to go through and add all of the other things in there. Um, but this is going to be your basics. Just make sure you have your widget find, found, go through, find all of your different fields and be able to go through and fill things out over here. There are some limitations, but most, most commands that you would be able to go through and create within Word are going to go through and still work if you've uh, if you're going to go through it and generate a document from file, there are some. So if you ever hit an obstacle, 
I would definitely uh, just, you could check it out online. You could answer, ask one of us, uh, but it might be, it might not be possible and we might have to find some other workaround to get it to work. And okay. when you go to add those widgets, you do have the option to auto move to a folder and auto tag. Um, if you are a firm that really likes to make sure that all of their documents are where they're supposed to be, which again helps in the long run with workflows, you can auto move this document to a specific folder in your folder structure. And then you can add tags, which uh, if you use tags, you know, they're a great way to search and categorize your items. So adding them at this level just eliminates a step down the line for your team to have to move and manage the that data. You can always change the folder. Um, or if you're like this one document doesn't need to be in this folder, you can always move it um, and add additional tags. But again, if you do it at this level, makes it a little bit easier for your team. A hundred percent agree. Um, so if I were to go to my project two and let me open my docs, here it is just right there. Uh, also just a quick tip with folders too. If you don't want every folder to have all of these in there, you can also create folders based off of these, these doc gen widgets, essentially. Uh, what you do there is you create a folder. Let's just do client letter. That's been added. Oh, let me save. And if I come down to my case summary, let's see here, I can now pick that client letter folder. And then come up here and remove it. So now our template tree will, every new project will generate like this. And then on for the projects that do not have it, when you go through and you generate uh, a new doc gen from there, it should go through and create a new folder for us. I guess it could have gone through and been in uh, correspondence, but then that wouldn't have been any fun because I wouldn't have been able to show you this. Okay, so do refresh. Let's see here, where is my folder here. Oh, shoot. What do I call it? Jasmine, do you remember now? Client letter. I already forgot. It, client letter. I think it didn't maybe finish generating before you um, or regenerating before you refreshed. Um, while we wait for that, you can also see that um, the name, maybe you want your client's name to show in the title of your um, document, or you want some other information that you've pulled from Filevine showing up in there you have the option to um, use those same replacement codes you put in the document and use them as your title of your document. Um, again, eliminating you all from having to rename all of your documents with maybe your client name, you can have it automatically pull in. Absolutely. So, well, I guess I don't need that necessarily. I can come here and just edit it. Add it to whatever I want it to be. This is what people are gonna see when it's generated, um, I believe, I don't know, I don't know if it's been fixed. I'll have to test it when you download the, the letter. I'm, I don't remember if it says the exact same thing either. Um, we'll call it need new HIPAA client dot name. Perfect. All right, we'll test this again. Here we go. Generate it. Make sure it actually goes through and works this time. And for those of you that maybe don't work in customs editor or the advanced tab often, Derek is refreshing his um, page because anytime you make a change in the back end, you want to just force refresh any other page that you have open so that it tracks those updates and changes. Um, so that's why you see him um, refreshing so that again, it, it tracks. And there's your client letter yeah. folder with a document in it now. So uh... Heck yeah, and it, has her, it has Yeti the name, Yeti the dog's name right in it. So we have the title of the document. And then I think, 
Let me download quickly. And okay, nope, it is named exactly like that. Cool. So that is something they've updated since back in the day. Now, too, as well, the another hint, uh, if you have, let's say, in a file upload folder, uh, like this invoice is here, and this is set to something. Um, if you go through and you attach a letter there that's somewhere else in Filevine, you can attach it there, and then it should go through and it should update it accordingly. See if it actually did for us, because I might be too fast again. Or we might not have that hooked up to anything since this isn't a real template. Mm -hmm. Let me double check that one first, uh, since it should have immediately worked. Go through and find, well, I can do, let's just search for docgen. Here you go, docgen widget. And this one is called test. What is it called? I know I want, sorry, I just lost my train of thought. We're in medical right now, so I want a uh, docgen. There's a file upload. Ah, oh, there you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or file attachment. And I dropped this one in. Billing request invoice. Oops. Do. Billing request invoice file attachment. Oh, dang it. It wasn't. It didn't have it um, already set up, which is why then it wouldn't go through and work for us. Well, dang. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to remove this. Cool. What you're seeing Derek do is something that only admins have the option to do. Your regular users are not going to be able to delete documents. Yeah. Um, so no worries. This there. is all going to be for, I have full permissions for everything when it comes down into our file by an instance, and you may not for your organization. So if you're not able to do something like this, you might need to go through and talk to the uh, the administrator if you can. Okay. So my client letter is folder is now empty, but my medical folder now is it's it's over. It's been moved to the area that I dragged drug it to, and if I added tags to the the widget in the background. Much like, you know, anything, anything here. They can create new tags, test. We'll just do that one. If I would have done it, then it would have gotten that tag as well. It is not, if I add it right now, it's not going to go through and update it. It's, it occurs when something has been added to a file upload field. Okay, cool. So let me see. Okay. So I will say, now this part of this working with the doc gen after we generate it will depend on whether or not you have docs plus or not. I I would hope everyone does. Uh, I highly recommend it if you don't um, because you could do a lot of things with it. And it's just, it's nice overall. And I think definitely worth the cost. Okay, so this is going through, this is loading. It's taking a sweet little time for me, but I wanna be able to go through and just kind of talk on a couple of these things here. Um, we can see different information over on the side once I've selected it. I can also click here on the folders and get a tree view, much like this. This makes it really easy to drag and drop and move folders. Uh, heads up, if you want to share a folder, you're going to want this view too. I don't think they fixed it the other way yet, uh, where we can actually go through and share something on it. Let's see here. You jump to, oh, cool. So yeah, I mean, you jump to other things on there too as well. Let me go to, back to our document. Okay. So on this right side, I can download it. I can get a preview. I can edit it. And then I have a bunch of different options here too as well. If I wanted to, I could start a new side, sidebar and send it to Jasmine. Hey, did you see this? 
And I can also add my project two as well. Perfect, send. So now Jasmine can, and I can go through and talk about the document within FileVine itself or in our sidebar. And then when we're done, of course, you know, we can go through and we can do all the different sidebar things with it. The action items that you see in the docs section are very similar to the actions that you'll see within the section that you actually generated the document from. So your case summary section is going to have almost the same action items minus send to PDF um, and start new sidebar. And I think guest share is also a permission only in the docs section. Um, yes. But everything else you can manage from the case summary section. One that I always like to point out because I don't know if many people use it or know about it is the note this feature. I knew it. I knew that's what you're going to do. <laughs> While you saw Derek send it into sidebar, um, which is great, right? If somebody's online and you're able to chat about it quickly, this is an opportunity for you to task or mention a person so that they get an update. Maybe they're not online and so they didn't see your sidebar um, or you know, maybe they have notifications turned on to where they get a ping for every task that they get you can go ahead and task them. This will bring the item into the activity feed. Derek has made this a task. So it will be assigned to me because I need to do something. And it will also include the link to that document so that I don't have to go through the trouble of trying to go to the doc section, figure out which folder it's housed in um, and which document he's talking about, right? If you've generated multiple of um, these kind of requests, you might not know which version that they're talking about or anything like that. And so um, you can have it housed here. And similar, again, to where you generated it in the case summary, you do have a drop down for you to be able to do some of those same action items, um, edit it, email it, all of that good stuff are, again, here in the case summary, in the activity feed, and in the doc section. So you have a plethora of places um, that you can go to kind of manage and um, edit the document or share it out. Sorry about that. I must have muted myself. Can you hear me now? Cool. Okay. So then you can also do the same thing here from the activity. There's going to be the same options that you have from your section, like uh, in our case, in our instance here, case summary, you can do all those different things, which is really nice. Uh, it's really nice to have the option to do all these things in all of these different areas because they're still going to go through and function the same way. But since I went through and I tagged that over to Jasmine, it created a task, and then I can go through and I can look at, oh, attach the notes and click on it here and it will bring me exactly to that task. So if I have more than one team going through and working on a document and they're talking about it, uh, we could have more than one over here. Or, you know, let's say you have your project manager who's bringing more than one person in to look at this document one at a time. That's where you would go through to find all of those tasks are all of those notes. Let me get back to my medicals again. Okay, perfect. So with Docs Plus, we have a couple things too that we can go through and do. You can create a new blank doc. We can also have bait stamping. Um, bait stamping, I know we do have, we should have videos on this in our, uh, I believe on our YouTube or our just our website as well, uh, to be able to go through and easily bait stamp. You can add a project to a document. Oh, I already have there, two there, oops. And then I can, figure out my pre six number of digits, starting page number, all of those, and then be able to go through and apply my base stamp accordingly. Ah, we are in PDF now. Perfect. With PDFs, we can do something very similar as well. Well, not similar. We can edit them, much like we can with our, our real documents. So here it's loading right now into a PDF file. Wonderful. And then with Docs Plus, I can go through and I can work on a bunch of different things, reorganize my pages, flip my pages, however I need to, um, control a lot of different information. And then I can go through and redact, which is also nice. To be able to just have it there. And once I hit redact all, then it's going to go through and it will block out uh, whatever I need to. We can add some forms in here too, as well. 
if we need to, I believe, I don't think we can add from here. Can we add specifically from here? Sure can. That's cool. Wonderful. And then you can also insert images or if you have a signature, like for me, if you, you can upload one and have it there, uh, or you can just, you know, draw on the computer with my terrible signature. Okay, so I only have to click one or click once and then go with it. Ooh, that's still really bad. So I would need to upload one. Um, but, you know, if I was on an iPad or something like that, it'd be perfect for me. So yeah, you can do so many different things in here. Most things that you would be able to do uh, within a different PDF editor, but it's, since we are, it's does not going to have all of your features as like Adobe Pro would, uh, but it should have enough to be able to help you do what you need to be able to do. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Go. Oh. And also, unlock a document. If someone else is using the document, it's open and they're editing it. I've already unlocked it, so that's not going to help us now. But there was a little lock here that says, oh, it's being edited right now. And you can't go through and edit it. You can unlock a document, but it's gonna it could go through and it can mess with what is in there because uh, you're going to be editing two different versions of it. You can create share links as well. It set passwords or make it so only file specific file line users can see it, which are really nice. And then you can also set, you know, a custom time frame. If it's a video that I've created internally, sometimes I'll set it for not maybe not that far in the future. Yeah, let's do 2000. So that brings it up until you know the end of the decade, probably still a little too long. Uh, but you can go through and you can create those time frames. And then if you wanted to as well, let's see here. Oh, easily upload. Where's my info on it? <laughs> Let's see here. Ah. ah, they've updated it on me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it used to not be uh, that straightforward. Okay, but I can go through and I can click on my folder, let's say I want to share something as well, hit on the tree, and then I can come here and new share link for client. And then if you do it, enable two-way way sharing, then the client can upload information to you. You will have to go through and set which ones they can see or share one by one. If you add them by guest, you'll have to share folders one by one or documents one by one. Uh, but there's a lot of easy ways to go through and collaborate with others that are not necessarily a part of a filebind org because someone could create an account and just not being an organization. Um, so you could invite them in there. And if you're looking at the folder tree like Derek is, you can also just click um, on whichever folder and there should be a list of options. Maybe it's a right click, control, I'm on a Mac. Um, oh, there you go. You, click there go. you can click share folder from there too. That's what I was doing wrong. That's what I was looking for in the original. <laughs> cool. Um, Let's see here. Does anyone have any questions, any anything that you want to go have me recover or something that we didn't address that you were hoping to? When okay, you get a question. Word document that has tracking with notes in the margins to a PDF, are the notes lost? Is there a way around that? Oh, you mean like uh, you've been sharing your tracking? back and forth within FileVine. So I don't know if necessarily there's a way to go through and get the notes yet in there, but what we can do is as I'm going, oh, I don't want this view anymore. Just open that up. I can come here, let it load. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it takes forever sometimes. and go through and we can have, you know, we can have discourse within here as well. We could also find our old versions. Otherwise, I would look to see if it's possible to print those to another page. Um, 
I haven't seen it natively where it goes through and we convert to a PDF and you can keep the notes in there, but I would suggest potentially using some of these things. And then also if you just have your track changes on as well, I believe that could go through and it would work for your original document. So then you could reference your old document for it may not be for PDF. I will look into that though, because that is a good question. Very good question. Um, and while you're in this view, Derek, similar to um, you being able to edit a template, you can also edit a iteration of a document. Um, you would use that little um, paper and pencil icon in the up, upper right for a doc gen, uh, just right here. It'll open similar to what you saw with the template, and it'll have a series of numbers and letters at the top. That's how you know whatever you're doing is edited in FileVine. And then all you have to do is press save and those changes are automatically gonna go back into FileVine for you. Um, so you don't have to download, edit the document, re-upload, anything like that. You can edit in place, whether it's the template or uh, a version of a document. Note that anytime you make an edit to a generated document, it is only going to be made for that iteration. If you regenerate the document, it'll revert back to whatever is on the template. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I'm sorry, they responded back. Tracking will show when converted to a PDF, but the notes on the right margin get cut off. Thanks. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I don't see any other um, questions that have come in. So I wanted to take an opportunity to thank you so much, Derek, um, as always for yeah. all of your knowledge and sharing it with us. And then also um, just point out a few things to those of you that are still here. We do um, love to bring you all free help and would love to hear feedback um, from you all on how you're enjoying free help, but also any topics that you would like to um, take advantage of or hear us um, kind of give free help. So feel free to fill out that form that I posted in um, the chat. We also do, again, full service. So if you have doc gens that you're like, great, I've learned how to do them, I don't have the time to do them, or I have some more questions or whatever else, we are here to help. Um, we try our best to be a part of your team. So if you would allow us, we would definitely um, love to do that. If not, we can come and go as you please um, and work with you on kind of a variety of items um, within FileVine or for your FileVine if needed. Those links are also in the chat and you can kind of peruse our website. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Derek or myself. Um, and as always, we do these free help sessions every Wednesday. Um, you all were lucky enough to see Derek two weeks in a row, but usually we do rotate um, the co-host here. So you will see a variety of topics and a variety of uh, Vine skillers that you can work with as well. Um, so thank you all so much. We hope to see you in a future free help session. And thanks again, Derek. Absolutely. Thanks, right. everybody. Bye-bye.